you know, there's been a general assault in the last 25 years on uh, solidarity, democracy, uh, you know, social welfare, uh, anything that interferes with private power. And there are many targets. Uh, one of the targets is undoubtedly the educational system. In fact, you know, a couple of years ago already, the big investment firms like, you know, Lehman Brothers and so on were sending around brochures to their clients uh, saying, look, uh, we've taken over the health system, you know, we've, we've taken over the prison system. Uh, the next big target is the educational system. So we can privatize the educational system, make a lot of money out of it, uh, and also uh, notice that privatizing it uh, undermines the dangerous there's a kind of an ethic that's under, that has to be undermined, namely the idea that you care about somebody else. Uh, in a public education system, a public education system is based on the principle that you care whether the kid down the street gets an education. You know, and, and that's got to be stopped. Uh, what you have to do is exactly, you know, I mean, this is very much like what the, uh, you know, the workers in the mills and Lowell, Massachusetts, were worrying about 150 years ago. The, uh, they were trying to stop the idea that what they called the new spirit of the age, gain wealth for getting all but self. We want to stop that. That's not what we're like. We're human beings. We care about other people. We want to do things together. Uh, we care about whether the kid down the street gets an education. Uh, we care about whether somebody else has a road, even if I don't use it. Uh, you know, we care about whether there's a child slave laborer in Thailand. Uh, we care about whether uh, uh, somebody else, some elderly person, uh, gets food. That's Social Security. You care whether somebody else gets food. You know, all of that, there's a huge effort to try to undermine all of that, to try to privatize aspirations so then you're totally controlled, you know. Privatize aspirations, you're completely controlled. Uh, private power goes its own way. Everyone else has subordinated themselves to it. Well, that's part of the basis for the attack on the public education system, and it goes right up to the universities. Uh, in the universities, there's a move towards corporatization, uh, and that has very clear effects. I mean, you see it at MIT, you, know, you see it everywhere. Uh, it means that you want to create, a, for, like, just like industry, you want to create a more flexible workforce. That means undermine security. Uh, it means uh, have uh, cheap temporary labor, okay, like graduate students, uh, so uh, uh, who don't have to be paid much and who can be thrown out. You know, they're temps, okay? They're going to be around for a couple of years, and then you toss them out and have some more temps. Uh, the... Uh, uh, it, it affects research, strikingly. You see it at research. I'm sure you see it here, but at a research institute like where I am, MIT, you see it pretty clearly. Uh, as funding shifts from public entities, including, incidentally, the Pentagon, in fact, primarily the Pentagon, which has long understood that its domestic role is to be a cover for transferring public funds into private profit, uh, when funding goes from the Pentagon and uh, other and the National Science Foundation and others into to, to corporate uh, funding, there's a definite shift. Uh, a, a, a corporation, say you know some pharmaceutical corporation, is not particularly likely to want to fund research which is going to help everybody. Okay, it's not going to want to. I mean, there's exceptions, but by and large, it's not going to want to fund say basic biology which may be a public good that anybody can use uh, 10 or 20 years from now. Uh, it's going to want to fund things that it can make profit from and furthermore do it in the short term. So a corporate, there's a tendency, a striking tendency and a perfectly natural one for corporate funding to uh, institute more secrecy uh, and short-term applied projects uh, to which the corporation has a proprietary control on publication and use. Well, you know, technically a corporate, corporate funding can't uh, demand secrecy, but that's only technically. In fact, they can. Like the threat of not refunding imposes secrecy. There are actually cases like this, some of them so dramatic they even made the Wall Street Journal. Uh, there was an article in the Wall Street Journal last summer you may have seen about MIT, my place. Uh, a, what had happened was that a student in a class, computer science class, 
uh, had refused to answer a question on an exam. Uh, he said he knew that when he was asked why by the professor, he said, well, he knew the answer, but he was under a secrecy con condition from a different professor not to answer it. And the reason was in the research he was doing for this other professor, uh, they had sort of worked out the answer to this, but they wanted to keep it secret uh, because they wanted to, you know, make money or something. Well, you know, this is so scandalous. I mean, even the Wall Street Journal was scandalized. Uh, but that's the kind of thing that's, uh, that's the kind of thing you can expect, you know, as there's a move towards corporatization. After all, corporations, you know, they are not uh, uh, benevolent societies. Uh, as Milton Friedman correctly says, the uh, board of directors of a corporation actually has a legal oblig ob uh, obligation uh, to be a monster, you know, an ethical monster. Their legal obligation is to maximize profit for the shareholders, the stockholders. You know, they're not supposed to do nice things. If they are, it's probably illegal. You know, I mean, unless it's intended for some, uh, you know, to mollify people or something, improve market share or something. Uh, and that's the way it works. You know, uh, it's uh, you you, could, you you don't don't expect corporations to be benevolent any more than you expect dictatorships to be benevolent. I mean, maybe you can force them to be benevolent, but it's the structure that's, uh, it's the tyrannical structure that's the problem. And as the universities move towards corporatization, you, you expect all of these effects. And one of the effects, you know, in a way, I think the most important is the undermining of the conception of solidarity and cooperation. And I think that lies at the heart of the attack on the public school system, on the attack on social security, uh, uh, the effort to block any form of national health care, which has been going on for years. Uh, and in fact, across the board, and it's un you know it's understandable. If you want to regiment the minds of pe men just the way an army regiments its body, you've got to undermine these subversive notions of mutual support, solidarity, uh, sympathy, caring for other people, and so on and so forth. The attack on public education is one example. Uh, incidentally, it's I don't know how it's working here, but in Massachusetts, where I see it directly, it's. Uh, it's, it's not, uh, there's a comparable attack on the state colleges. You know, the state colleges, which sort of, you know, they're for the, you know, for working class people, uh, you know, people come back to college after they're halfway in their career, you know, mothers who come back, uh, people from the urban ghettos and so on and so forth. That's what the state college system has been. And they're under serious attack by an interesting method uh, the method has been to raise the entrance standards for the state colleges without improving the schools. Okay. So when you don't improve the schools, but you raise the entrance standards for the people who are trying to go on, kind of obvious what happens, uh, you get lower enrollments. When you get lower enrollments, you've got to cut staff. Because remember, we have to be efficient, like corporations. So you cut staff, and you cut services, and then you can admit even fewer people, and there's kind of a natural cycle. And you can see where it ends up. Uh, it ends up with uh, people either not going to college or figuring out some way to spend $30,000 a year at a private college. You know, and you know what that means. Uh, all of these are comparable efforts, are you know, part of the general effort, I think, to... Uh, to create a uh, socioeconomic order which is under the control of private concentrated power. Uh, shows up all over the place. 